Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution. Here to discuss guidelines for curve sketching and further into this series, basically look at examples of part six of the series and look at an example that involves slant asymptotes. Actually, you looked into this example briefly in my previous video on slant asymptotes where I just showed that the asymptote is slant. But basically, now we're going to graph the whole thing, starting with uh, basic domain intercept symmetry, asymptotes, intervals increase or decrease, local max, min, and concavity and points of inflection, and put all these info together to sketch the curve. That's basically the guidelines. You see the summary on the on info link below. In, uh, the example we'll look at is basically if x is equal to x cubed divided by x squared plus 1. So if we look at part A of the guidelines, look at domain. Well, basically, uh, this one here, the bottom is never uh, going to be 0 because this one's always positive. So then uh, this is defined everywhere, and this is polynomial divided by polynomial. And so then, yeah, basically, x element of all real numbers, or or x is defined for, or f of x is defined for every x value. So now let's look at part b, which is uh, intercepts here. And then uh, first thing you do to get the y-intercept, you just set x equal to zero. And in this case, we set it to zero. You just have a zero plus zero plus one. This is going to be just zero. So the that is the y-intercept here, and the x-intercept you just set y is equal to zero. So we're going to have x cubed, x squared plus one. If you cancel these out, um, if you just uh, multiply by x squared plus 1 to get it out of there, you're going to be left with x equals 0. So basically, uh, uh, it doesn't matter how you do it, you're going to get the intercept at 0, 0 here, or, or intercepts at the origin. Now if we look at symmetry part C, the guidelines basically, the, the function is x cubed over x squared plus 1. So this x squared doesn't matter what you put negative or positive, it's going to be the same thing. But then this, so then this is the only thing that's going to change how the function looks, which is x cubed here. So if you put, uh, let's say, y of uh, negative x inside, you're going to get negative x cubed over, well, x squared. This one is negative x cubed over x squared plus 1. This one doesn't matter if you put negative, it's always going to be positive. And this just equals to negative x3 x squared plus 1, or it equals 2y of x. So then this is an odd function here. This is odd, and so it, what it just means is that it's going to reflect the opposite of it. If you have something like this, you're going to have something like this. And this is about the y-axis here. So all we have to do, do is look at, well, all we need to do is yeah, look at x is greater than 0 here, or greater than or equal to 0, and then basically re reflect it off uh, just reflected like this, but uh, in inverse of it like that. So now if we look at part D of the guidelines, basically look at asymptotes here. Now this is uh, gets interesting. If you look at vertical asymptotes here, well, there is none in this case because uh, the f of x is defined everywhere. So there's no x value that it's not defined and, and defined at, so you will you are not going to have an infinite slope or whatnot. So this is no horizontal one. And if we look at the vertical one, I mean the horizontal asymptotes, Basically, if we just go to plus or minus infinity, it doesn't matter which way we go. x cubed over, this is x squared plus 1. And this one, as you can see, this one is a higher degree power. So this this would just go to, well, plus or minus infinity. Because uh, you could also divide this by 1 over x squared. But yeah, the limit, so then there is no horizontal asymptote because they both approach infinity. And if there's no, uh, yeah, there's no horizontal asymptote, but but like I showed before, since this function is a rational function, which is polynomial divided by polynomial, and also just one degree higher than the, the denominator, the numerator is one degree higher than the denominator, like x cubed versus x squared, then we should have a slant asymptote. And, and to get the slant asymptote, basically we need something of a form of, yeah, some of a form of the limit of x approaches plus or minus infinity of f of x minus a line, this equation of a line, mx plus b, if it equals 0, then we have a slant asymptote. And, and, and I showed that you need to use long division to uh, in order to get it in the form of this. And when we use long division here, we're going to have x squared plus 1. You see my uh, on the info on, on the link below on the info, you can see the videos where I show slant asymptotes and also how to do long division. So now if you have something like this, you just need to put a value here, multiply to get x cubed, the same as this one. So we put an x here, multiply by this and that, we're going to get x cubed plus x and subtract it, we're going to just get negative x here. And since this is degree less than this, we stop here and basically we write down what this function was, x squared plus 1 is equal to 
x minus the remainder, which is plus 1. And now what you can see here, if you just rearrange this one, put it on this side, we're going to get x cubed over x squared plus 1 minus x is equal to negative x, x squared divided by x squared plus 1. There's a negative here. So now this is uh, now now this is the form of uh, f of x, and this is the line m x plus b. In this case, m is one, b is zero. So we just put the limit in. We get limit x approaches plus or minus infinity. This one doesn't matter. Of f of x minus x. This just equals to well limit of this one here x approaches plus or minus infinity negative x, x squared plus 1. So now uh, this one, uh, to get the limit here, we just, uh, you can see this is a higher power, it should go to 0, but you could also times this by 1 over x squared, times by 1 over x squared, the, high, the power of the highest denominator, the denominator with the highest power here, just divided by that. So then we're going to get, in this case, limit x approach plus or minus infinity of negative 1 over x, divided by in this case here, we're going to get 1 plus 1 over x squared. And this goes to 0. And this goes to 0 as well. So you're just going to be left with 0 for plus or minus infinity. And then what this shows is that the equation y equals x is slant asymptote here. And yeah, once again, you can see the, my, the slant asymptote video to get a more clarification on how slant asymptotes are, how, basically how they're derived and whatnot. And so now if we look at part E, the guidelines, we have to look at intervals of increase or decrease. First thing we have to do is find the second, I mean, find the derivative. Well, let's write down this one. I'm just going to rewrite this function just so that we can apply the product rule because I don't like memorizing the quotient rule if you see my uh, links below on what they are. So basically, if you write the, the, the denominator like this with a negative 1 on top, we can just apply the product rule because it's easier to memorize. The derivative is going to be, well, we just write... 3x squared root of x cubed times this by whatever this function was and then plus x cubed and then times it by this one right here uh, I mean I mean yeah, the derivative of that is negative 1 then x squared plus 1 put a negative 2 here and then times by using the chain rule of the derivative of the inside function 2x so we just simplify this. If we just rearrange that, we're going to get something like this. 3x squared divided by x squared plus 1. Just put this at the bottom. And then this one would be negative 2 times x to the 4. So times is by the common denominator. Just so we get a common denominator, this would just be x, plus, x squared plus 1. x squared plus 1 here. And then just to simplify this. Yeah, we'll get something like this divided by just the common denominator. x squared plus 1 squared. Uh, and then basically expand this out. We're going to get... Yeah, we'll expand it out, we'll get something like this here, and basically the these x4, we just we could simplify this one. Basically they you would subtract it, you're just gonna get x4 plus 3x squared all divided by x squared plus 1 squared. Now when we look at this derivative here, when we look at because they're all uh, even powers, so this one's always gonna be positive here, this is always gonna be positive, it's always gonna be positive here. So then Basically, y prime is greater than 0 for basically x is greater than 0 or even x is less than 0. Uh, yeah, so it's greater than 0 for all values, but let's say at x is equal to 0 here, it's uh, it's going to be equal to 0 here. Just put a 0 everywhere. You're going to get y prime is equal to 0 here. So in, in this case here, well, uh, 0 is a critical number because derivative is 0 but uh, but then since it's greater than 0 everywhere it is basically increasing everywhere or just increasing for all x basically except 0 where it's, it's just not doing anything except that 0 now if you look at part f local max so minimum well the critical number is basically whenever the derivative is 0 and that's when x equals to 0 here but is so y prime is equal to zero, but it's not changing. It doesn't change from uh, decreasing or increasing. It's, it's going to be because it's increasing when it's less than zero and increasing when it's greater than zero. So then there is no local max or min. And you would have something like this. It would be increasing and keeps increasing. So something like that.
Now when we look at base part G of the guidelines, look at concavity and post inflection, first thing we do is find the second vertebrae, but let's just write down the first one, which is basically this one here. Again, once again, simplified so that we could apply the product rule here. And then when we take the root of that, we just put the yeah, put the negative two like that form. And so basically the second derivative is gonna be the root of this one is four x cubed plus six x. And then this is x squared plus 1 to the power of negative 2. And then this is going to be a plus x4 plus 3x squared. Then we just do the root of this one, x squared plus 1. Put the negative 2 down. Now we're going to have a negative 3 here. And then the root of the inside is going to be 2x. And then when we uh, simplify this one, we'll just look something like this. And then we get times this by common denominator again. It's just to get the common denominator. X, plus, x squared plus 1, x squared plus 1. And then basically put them back here. We're going to get something like this. And when we expand them, we're going to get, just multiply this by this using the FOIL method. We'll do another video on the FOIL method later, but basically expand this. We're going to get 4x5 plus 4x cubed plus 6x cubed here. And then plus 6x. And then all this one's going to be minus... I'll just write minus here, 4x to the 5 minus 12x cubed. It's, it's a little messy here. I'll divide this by x squared plus 1 cubed. So now uh, basically we could cancel this and this out as like terms. We add up the like terms. This one is 4. This is 10, 10x cubed minus 12x cubed. We're going to get simplifies to 6x minus uh, 2x cubed all over all over x squared plus 1 power of 3 here. And now this one, we could just simplify this a bit further. Just put uh, 2x out of there. So we're going to get 3 minus x squared all divided by x squared plus 1. And this is basically our second derivative here. So now if we look at possible inflection points, it's basically when the derivative, second derivative is equal to zero. And in this case, you can see here, if this is equal to zero, you're going to get a 2x, 3 minus x squared. At the bottom, you can just cancel out, just times it out, you're going to cancel with a zero. So now we're going to be left with x equals to zero, or this one here, 3 minus x squared is equal to zero. And you're going to be left with, in this case, uh, yeah, this one is going to be x squared, put it over this side, is equal to 3, so then x equal to plus or minus root 3. But remember what we uh, had before, this is an odd function. Yeah, so since it's an odd function, we only look at when x is greater than 0 and then just do just draw it accordingly on the other side. So we'll only look at, uh, in this case, x equals 0 and, and also, um, what is it, x equals 2 plus root 3. And this will greatly simplify our uh, infle finding inflection points. So now if we were to basically put these points on there, the possible inflection points that x equals to 0 here, and then also uh, now let's look at, this is uh, root 3 here. So x equals root 3. So now we have two intervals of check versus 4 if we were looking at the negative side. So we only look at this one, this interval here, and this one right here. So if we look at the first interval, we're uh, basically between 0 and root 3 here. If we look at this one right here, if it's since on this side here, this one is going to be, well, it's going to be a plus on the, this 2x. This is one because it's an x here. And then this one is also going to be positive here. Yeah, this one's going to be positive for everything, actually. It's always positive. This is the only thing that changes here. And now this one, since this absolute value of this is less than root 3 here, then this this one should be positive here because this value here, if you have something less than root three but greater than zero squared, you're going to be less than three, the absolute value. And then when you subtract it, you're not going to be negative; it's going to be positive. So this one, y double prime is greater than zero, or it's concave up. And then uh, the second interval here, where basically x is, well, x is just greater than uh, root three here. Now this one, yeah, this one's going to be positive, it's positive again, but then this one here, since the absolute value is greater than root 3, when you square it, you're going to have something bigger than root 3. So 3 minus subtr subtracted by a number bigger than 3 here, because it's squaring, then you're going to get, it's less than 0, or concaving down here. 
And now since uh, when we look at this one here, since it's changing, uh, the concavity is changing from up to down at this point at uh, root 3, then basically root 3 is equal, to, this is an inflection point here. But not only that here, since this one is concave up from 0 to root 3, but since it's an odd function, then it should be concaving down when it's less than this, so for the opposite case. So then basically 0 is also inflection point, and negative root 3 should also be according to this one. So these are all inflection points. I'll just put these all. In. So all these three are inflection points. And uh, these points are basically, well, at 0, you're going to have y is 0 here. And then if we plug in uh, root 3, we're going to get inside y of root 3 just to get the value. We're going to get basically root 3 to the power of 3 over root 3 squared plus 1. And then if we multiply this one out, remember this is just going to be, you could also write this one as root 3 times root 3 times root 3. And then this one is just 3. So we're going to be left with 3 times root 3. And then this one is root 3 squared is 3, so plus over 4. And similarly for y of negative root 3, this one is going to be equal to negative 3 over 3 over 4. So now we put all this information together and we just sketch the curve here. And basically the first thing we do, we draw the asymptote line and the in intercepts here, the intercepts at, basically there's only one intercept at 0, 0. And then if we draw the, this asymptote line, this slant asymptote line at y is equal to x here, y is equal to x. And now if we look at the inflection points at the, this point right here, it's basically at root 3 here, we'll just go root 3, and then also this value is actually less than uh, less than 1 here, I mean this one is less than uh, 3 here, because root 3, yeah, root 3 is less than 4, and then basically you're, this is a fraction of it, so it's a fraction of 3, so then it'll be under this y equals x line. So we're going to be something around uh, around this case right here, and this would be root 3 and this is 3 root 3 over 4. And then as you see this concaving up and it's increasing everywhere. It's always increasing except at this point. So it's concaving up. And then at this point it starts to concave down. And it keeps going like that. And remember this is an odd function. This is keep just draw an arrow there. Remember this is an odd function so it's going to be the exact opposite. So now in this case, the other inflection point should be at root three, negative root three, and this one's gonna be root three, negative root three over four here. So now, remember now this is, this is concave up, this is gonna be concaving down, and then it starts concaving up. So it, look, it would look something like this, and it goes, follows this asymptote line for infinity. So this is how the graph looks like. You could check with Google. So if we plug this into Google, x3 divided by x squared plus 1. And also graph uh, graph x. Yeah, as you can see there, there's our curve right here. So as you can see, there's the, uh, the red line as the asymptote line, the y equals x line. As you can see, it's concaving down up here. And root 3 should be somewhere between here. So it is concaving down and then it starts concaving up, but it's really small here. And it goes up and it follows this asymptote line. And similarly, this case here, it's concaving up. And then up to this point, roughly, it starts concaving down here. Well, that's all for today. Hopefully, you learned how to graph slant asymptotes. It's uh, pretty interesting. But uh, yeah, that's all for today. You can never get always download these notes and info below. If it's not there, you could uh, just ask me and I'll, <clears throat> I'll, I'll put the link up there or fix it or whatnot. Also, for if we learned, and you can also see the, the links below for the corresponding videos for like slant asymptotes and uh, further guidelines and the curve sketching and all. Well, that's uh, all for today. Hopefully, learned, and um, stay tuned for another math easy solution.